Well, good morning. I want to begin this week on basic business statistics by reviewing where we've been and how we got here. We have been focusing on descriptive statistics. You may recall that I asked you to describe two things, a friend and a variable. We found that it was very easy to describe a friend, but describing a variable, that isn't so easy. And so I taught you descriptive statistics, and now we know how to describe a variable. One of the things that we did with our variables was to put them into distributions. And we learned that what is common about distributions for categorical data and distributions for continuous data was this measure of frequency. And you recall, frequency answered two questions, how many and how much. Let's take a look at some distributions to see how we answered those two questions. A distribution is an arrangement of values in the data that show, number one, all possible values for the variable, and number two, how often each possible value occurs. Let's take, for example, these frequency tables. In the first column, we see each possible value. For continuous data, numbers 1 through 10, or for the categorical variable, stuffed monkey, rope bone, etc. And then we have a column that answers how often each score occurs. That could be a frequency, or if we're dealing with counts, we would call it n. Two designations for exactly the same thing. We also learned how to create charts and graphs for our data distribution. And again, the type of chart or graph that we use will depend upon the level of the data. When we have categorical data, we'll use a bar chart. We know it's a bar chart because the bars do not touch. For continuous data, we will use a histogram. A histogram, the bars do touch, and it shows us the shape of the distribution. But again, we see all possible values on the x-axis and how often each value occurs, its frequency, on the y-axis. And we also learned about a stem and leaf diagram, the best of both worlds. It shows us the actual values, the raw scores, their frequency, and gives us a picture of the shape of the distribution. Whether we are describing our distribution using tables or graphs, we want to know more than just how many and how much. In fact, when we have continuous data, scale level data, interval ratio level data, there's additional information that we want to know about our data set. So imagine we have a distribution of heights or weights, a large number of numbers about a particular variable. There are four questions that we want to answer about that distribution. Question number one, where is the center of the distribution? What number is in the middle? What number best represents all of the other numbers in that distribution? Typically, we will answer this question using a mean, which is our go-to measure of central tendency, but we also have options like the median and the mode. Measures of central tendency tell us where the center of the distribution tends to be located. The second question that we have about our distribution is, how spread out are the scores in the distribution? Are they all close together, packed tightly near the mean? Or are they spread out broadly with lots of high scores and low scores and much variability in between? Typically, we're going to answer questions about the variability in the data using the standard deviation. But other measures of variability would include the range, the interquartile range, the sum of squares, or the variance of the distribution. The third question that we're going to ask about our distribution of scale level scores is whether the distribution is symmetric. Does it look the same on both sides? Would it balance nicely in the middle? Is one side pulled out dramatically? Is another side bunched up with the number of scores? That is the question of symmetry. 
Now we answer questions about symmetry using a measure of skewness. Skewness tells us whether one end, one tail of the distribution has been pulled out in a specific direction. Skewness tells us symmetry. And the fourth question that we have about our distribution has to do with the heaviness or the thickness in the tails. And this question will be answered with a measure of kurtosis, which measures how heavy are the tails in the distribution. And so to review, our four questions are, where is the center of the distribution? How spread out are the scores? Is the distribution symmetric? Does it look the same on both sides? And number four, how heavy are the tails of this distribution? The first two questions, center and spread, are the questions that we're going to answer this week. And then next week, I'll tell you more about skewness and kurtosis.